Hey everybody, this is Thomas with Gun Rights for Illinois. I'm sitting here with uh, State Rep Tony McCombie, and uh, we're going to talk today, have a little conversation about uh, some of the issues that uh, are affecting our gun rights in Illinois. State Representative Tony McCombie, thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to uh, talk with me this morning. Of course, it's my pleasure. It's a, a very important topic. So you are from the uh, 71st district, is that correct? That's correct, Northwest Illinois. Northwest, that's over there by Moline, right? Yeah, my hometown is Savannah, Illinois, which is uh, about 25 minutes south of Galena, right on the Mississippi River. Perfect. So uh, I would assume the, uh, the gun owners out there, your constituents are a lot more pro 2A friendly than they are where I'm at here in uh, Cook County. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. The, the Republicans and Democrats are, are gun toting. I, I find that to be, um, once you get out of the Cook County and Collar County areas, that most of the state, regardless of uh, people's politics, tend to uh, usually agree uh, on gun rights issues. And, and I find that from the south and from the, the northwest of the state that that is pretty much the case. And so people like you end up fighting. It, it becomes... Uh, urban Illinois against rural Illinois. Would you kind of agree with that? I absolutely agree with that. I also agree with that on the on the politics. Oftentimes it's not Republicans and Democrats. It's, it is urban against rural. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, it's very difficult to do anything pro uh, pro 2A in this state. Uh, I, you know, go through the bills. There's probably about 160 or so uh, firearm related bills that were filed. I saw your name on uh, a few of them. Uh, I'll, I'll ask you to talk about them uh, in a little bit. Um, why do you think in this state we don't see more? A lot of bills were filed, good and bad. Why do you think we don't see more of those good bills gaining traction in Illinois? Well, I would guess probably because the the better bills, the more proactive compared to reactive bills, are proposed by uh, Republicans and we're in the minority and uh, we are not in control of what gets called. So right. those are probably the reason they're not called. I mean, I think that's the biggest problem is uh, uh, you don't have any control over what gets called. And then uh, a lot of bills just get sent to, uh, you know, rules committee to die. And that seems to be pretty typical of all of the uh, pro-gun bills. Absolutely. Yeah, I had a bill uh, last GA and it was similar uh, to one with Representative uh, Musman and she had it this year. And it was, it went a little too far and uh, she's great. We sat down and we talked it out and uh, her bill is much better and is actually part of a bill that representative uh, Keith Wheeler is trying to work on. Um, not quite there uh, in response. We don't wanna be the, the, the party of no. Uh, and we wanna, we also wanna be able to have uh, common sense legislation uh, but one of the worst things that any uh, legislator does is is be reactive. You know, when gun uh, abiding citizens, most of the time, these situations that are arising, um, we're not the one doing those crimes. Right, so right. Uh, we want to avoid those in all instances. You know, with the, the case with the dad in the Waffle House giving his his son uh, the guns back, you know, he broke the law. Um, those are situations we want to we want to address and handle. When you have a gun dealer uh, selling guns to criminals, those are the the situations we want to address. Um, you know, the the Floyd card is uh, being determined whether or not it's constitutional right now, and I think we'll find when it goes to the Supreme Court that it's not. Uh, so all of this, you know, may go away, uh, which is which is ultimately the hope. Uh, but you always want to believe that the intent of a legislator when they bring forth a bill is not to um, to do bad, um, but there are some that is, you know, and I and I have much more respect for those that just come right out and say, uh, I oppose guns, I want your guns, and rather than come in on the back end and come up with bills that ultimately um, our registrations, um, our fingerprinting because they want your information, big brother, uh, I have much more respect for them if they just come out and say, I want your guns, I want your information, uh, rather than, you know, lie to us. Right, yeah, I, I agree with that. It's easier to uh, to know what you're up against when people are a little bit honest about their motivations. Absolutely. Um, you mentioned the, the Waffle House, the father broke the law. Um, you know, 
to to make another law to me seems a little bit ridiculous if he's already broke the law how do you make uh giving a firearm to someone who's mentally unstable more illegal um it, you know it seems to me that the answer from people is well you know that law didn't work let's make another law and another law and another law mm -hmm. um and you know it just seems like that's the definition of insanity and at the same point in time uh, i think that the wrong group of people are being punished when they do that absolutely I think you can make sometimes, sometimes, I think you can make laws better, you can tweak them. So for example, in that particular case, had that uh, father maybe signed a document um, or whoever was transferred in that particular case saying, uh, I, I, am, I know I'm responsible for carrying these and I know I cannot give them back without uh, a release, let's say for a doctor in his particular case, because he did have some mental issues. Uh, so when you sign a document, uh, it, it kind of makes you feel uh, a little more responsible and you have to follow a process. So I think maybe even just that piece of it, acknowledging what you're doing would have helped that. Um, or, you know, I think if he would have been um, not so close, um, you know, maybe maybe in those particular cases, Maybe it shouldn't be a father son or maybe it should be, um, you know, I don't know the answer, the exact answer, but I think for my, my idea was there has to be some sort of a form. There has to be an acknowledgement of receipt. And I think that's the not saying necessarily I'm listing. I've got 10 guns and I'm listing because I don't I don't want a registry, but just acknowledging I have, you know, John Doe's guns and I'm holding them until you tell me I can release them back to him. And Would I think you that was help that situation. Would you agree that even in the absence of a firearm, that someone who's intent on uh, doing evil things, the evil acts are going to do those acts? I mean, you know, we see uh, in England acid attacks. We've seen all across the, the globe, Canada, New York, uh, Europe, where they're renting vehicles and just driving down the sidewalk. So, you know, I, I tell people, we can focus on uh, banning guns, which obviously I'm against, or we can focus on, you know, solving the problem. The problem isn't the uh, the how people are committing these evil, violent acts. The problem is the why people are committing these violent acts. Absolutely, I agree. And they always talk about mental health. Uh, they. Um, being the majority party years and years ago, I was speaking to another legislator who's no longer here and and he said, you know, the, uh, the talk was, you know, let's fully fund, you know, mental health and let's get this going. And when they put that in the budget, it was struck down. Um, you know, it really depends on what the priorities are and mental health isn't bright and shiny to some. So uh, they don't want to they don't want to fund those all the time. And that's unfortunate. And it's unfortunate that we have uh, let it go uh, over time, and now it's become worse. Uh, we have also, um, I feel, in society, have um, enabled bad behavior, uh, and that is a result sometimes of, of additional things. I think you're absolutely right when it comes to um, the object of the crime. I, I was so scared to think about when they were trying to get metal detectors in schools, and I, I thought, what is going to happen the day they have a metal detector at the entrance of a school and you have 150 kids at the entrance and somebody comes through with a car and you know mouth mm. them all down and it, it just it scared me to death to think about that because that that could very well happen and you're absolutely right it's not about the gun it's not about the knife it's not about the car it's not about the the pipe bomb um it, it is about the mental health and we do need to address that um, you know, our prison systems have become, um, they used to be mental health hospitals and now they're prisons. Uh, we're, we're, we are not addressing those situations and we certainly need to and we need to put our, our money where our mouth is and the state needs to invest in that. Uh, the federal government needs to invest in that. And until we do that, this is, we're going to continue to get this and that is the big issue. Okay. Um, I don't want to take a lot of your time. I know that there, you guys are in session today. We're nearing the end of the spring session. Um, fix the Foyd, Kathleen Willis's bill is uh, is on the menu, so to speak. There's a, a committee meeting, uh, I think at 
nine o'clock today um, that uh, that uh, two new amendments to to the fix the void bill. Um, I want to I want to ask you two questions. I'm going to ask you first. Obviously, committee meetings. Uh, there's the witness slip process. Um, these things are rushed through, uh, so I believe the lack of participation from people can be an issue. But more specifically, what is your um, what are your opinions on specifically witness slips? A lot of gun owners will say they don't matter. What do you think about that? Oh, I think they absolutely that that is that is the public's voice. That is uh, so important, and it is pretty. Uh, I don't want to say labor intense because it is, you know, it does take some time, and it's confusing. You don't know whether whether to say oral or written or business or self, and uh, until you get used to it. We've been trying to put things on our Facebook pages, and I just put one on my Facebook this morning, um, directly under my name, Tony McCombie. I think I emailed it to you. I saw uh, that. Yep. Yeah, so you could forward that, and it shows an example of a witness uh, slip. Uh, but that right there is extremely important because that is the only time in committee that they will say we have so many proponents and so many opponents. Now, it does make a moment of pause when you have a gun bill and it says there are 7,000 opponents, 50 proponents, and then they still push a bill through. Well, and, um, and that's the problem is seven to one opposition and the bill still goes through committee and i'm telling gun owners that you know there's more to it than just the committee right because the legislators are looking at this and they're sitting down uh and, and you're paying attention you're seeing what the numbers are and it probably I, I don't know this to be fact you can correct me if i'm wrong but probably i would assume that a legislator who's kind of on the fence that does help sway their uh, opinion one way or the other Absolutely. And we do have some uh, legislators on the Republican side that are in the suburbs uh, that have to vote with their district. Uh, SB 1966 is an overreach, and I don't believe any of them are going to vote for this, but there are a few on the, the Dem side that this is an overreach for them as well. This is uh, absolutely a horrible bill. To say this is a fix the void is ridiculous. Uh, to think that uh, we are going to now fingerprint every single person on uh, new and renewal. We're increasing the cost. The amendment today is uh, decreasing the cost down, but still an increase. It's going to add uh, more uh, labor to the Illinois State Police. Uh, most of Illinois is rural, and now we're going to have to go to a vendor for fingerprints. And they're going to show a map today in committee saying that it's not going to be a big deal because they're going to show that they have fingerprinting av availability in our schools. Well, that's for the teachers. I'm going to have to drive 45 minutes to go get my fingerprints done. And some say, well, maybe that's not a big deal. Well, it's 45 minutes in the opposite direction that I typically go. And now the state of Illinois is going to tell that vendor, you can only charge me $30 guess what? That fingerprint vendor might go away. So where sure. am I going to have to go now? Just like the FFL. The FFL uh, may be in the middle in our area, in the middle of a cornfield. It could be GOM Enterprises in Pearl City. And I'm going to go there and he, I'm going to tell him he can only charge me $10 to transfer five guns. He's going to say, you're crazy. Right. I'm not doing that for people. I mean, state of Illinois, there, it's so hypocritical. The, the, the majority party says just last night on, on uh, their expansion of abortion bills, we are not going to tell doctors how to do their job. What? You tell people how to do your job all day long, every day. But this, when you're talking about the Second Amendment, it is crazy. We're not going to take it the way of rights of women. You're taking away the rights of, of children, but you're going to take the, the way of the rights of Second Amendment owners. Wait, it, this this place is cuckoo. It's a zoo. It's a zoo. That's for sure. You know, I don't typically like to conflate issues, but an argument and an analogy I've seen going around quite a bit lately is uh, some of the very same people who are saying that uh, a voter ID 
uh, is a uh, racist or you know discriminates against the poor. Uh, some of these very same people are are the ones that are pushing for the the firearm owner identification to be you know $175 for uh, for a license when you add on all the fees, the background check, the fingerprints, etc. How how do they um, balance that mental gymnastics in their mind to say that on one hand uh, these fees are you know discriminatory and on the other hand for gun owners these fees are perfectly fine and acceptable well actually in committee the fees were brought up and i believe that's why they're being lowered uh, because they are going to be cumbersome for um for some um and uh it is still a, a in in some people's minds it is still a right uh, but you shouldn't, uh, it shouldn't be too costly for you to be able to have that right. Uh, you know, the bottom line is people are either one, going to follow the law, um, or two, they're not going to follow the law. Uh, those that want to commit crimes um, are going to commit crimes and they're not following the law regardless. So this really, to me, is, is not going to do anything this is not this bill here is they say as a result of Aurora, which was a horrible tragedy. He was not a valid Floyd card carrier. He was he broke the law. He broke the law in so many instances. This has nothing to do with uh, the revocation process. And, uh, you know, to even say, you know, well, ISP, it's you're going to now um, it's voluntary for it. They say, well, now the ISP, the Illinois State Police, is going to go in to my home and get my guns if my FOID is revoked. No, that's not the case. The FOID is going to, or the ISP is going to work with your local law enforcement and ask them, they don't have to, ask them to go get your guns. Uh, they don't have to participate. And I don't know how many of those are going to do that. We even have some towns in my district that don't have police officers. Uh, they rely on their sheriffs, their county sheriff's department. And uh, I, don't, I don't know how many are going to uh, volunteer to go into somebody's home to seize their guns. I, I foresee that not to happen. Um, so I don't see how that process is going to be cleaned up with this bill either. And that's ultimately what they want to, they say they want to fix. So this bill isn't going to touch that. And that's a shame because that's how they're selling it. And that's that's too bad. So what you're saying is there's a chance they might be lying to us. <laughs> there's no chance. There's there's completely what's happening. OK, got it. Um, what can and should gun owners be doing to get involved and and to stop these bad policies from becoming law? You know, gun owners and Second Amendment uh, believers uh, you guys are great. Uh, you are very active. You storm the Capitol. You make your phone calls. You send emails. You share on social media. Um, my only ask is that you continue to do so with respect. Um, we we don't we don't cuss on Facebook. Um, there, I see it once in a while, and sorry, but I do hide your posts if I see that. Um, continue to do that. Um, we can't look like we're maniacs. Um, because that goes against, you know, uh, the, the then folks that are against us, they see, that's what I'm talking about. They're crazy. Um, so just do so, just lead and continue to lead with kindness and respect, and we're going to win this. Excellent. I want to thank you very much. Before we go, is there anything else you want to add? Anything else you want to throw out there? Yeah, don't give up hope. Wonderful. Tell uh, your constituents how they can get a hold of you. Um, you can reach out to my office anytime, 815-632-7384. Um, you can follow me on social media, Tony, T-O-N-Y, McCombie, M-C-C-O-M-B-I-E. Um, my email is McCombie at ilhousegop.org. Um, pretty easy to get a hold of. Wonderful. Thank you very much. I appreciate okay. you taking the time. Of course, anytime. Thank you.